Our dinosaur of the day is Camptosaurus. Camptosaurus lived during the late Jurassic about 156 to 145 million years ago in North America, and its name means bent or flexible lizard. It's thought to be an ancestor of later large herbivores like iguanodons and duckbills, and it looked a lot like an iguanodon. So it was a pretty heavy dinosaur. It was an ornithischian dinosaur, about 16 to 23 feet long, 3 to 4 feet high at the hips, and weighed about 2,200 pounds. It had a long snout and a horny beak, hundreds of teeth. Its legs were longer than its arms. It had four-toed feet and five-fingered arms, and it grazed on low-lying plants. So Camptosaurus had a triangular skull, which was about 15 inches long. And its hand had five digits. So the hands are really interesting. I had to look at a lot of pictures before I really understood what it looked like. But the first, second, and third digits had claws. But the fourth and fifth fingers had little nubs that some places describe as hooves. So it's kind of like uh, just a really blunt finger with a thick nail at the end of it. Overall, the hand was really stiff because the wrist was fused, and it made the hand really good for holding up the weight of the animal, but it made it completely useless for trying to grasp things. The teeth in the skull were very tightly packed, as we see with a lot of the herbivorous dinosaurs, and it likely ate tough vegetation. Specifically, it probably ate cycads, which are an interesting looking plant. You may have seen them. You can still buy cycads in plant nurseries. They're really thin. It looks like one leaf from a distance, but it's really a bunch of thin spines closely put together on one stem. So it would have been really hard to chew. I can't imagine trying to chew through that thing. And they had a tough toothed beak. Basically the end of their skull was a a beak rather than, you know, just teeth. So even though it had no teeth in the front of the mouth, it had strong teeth in the side of the jaw, known as cheek teeth, to grind the plant material. So it could crush the tough vegetation in its cheeks, and these teeth were strong because of ridges on the outer surface, and they also had a flat grinding surface. It also had probably had pretty fleshy cheeks, so it could keep food in the mouth while it's chewing or even for later, for a later snack or something. One possible thing it, that it may have eaten is psychedelic fungus. That came up in the news this week. Scientists found an amber fossil of ergot, which is a grass parasite that could be poisonous and can cause hallucinations. So uh, it's kind of a precursor to LSD, and it could develop, it could cause uh, muscle spasms in addition to the hallucinations. There's a phrase called St. Anthony's Fire that refers to this burning feeling that you get by, because it's constricting blood vessels. Ergot has been around since actually at least the Jurassic period, possibly the Cretaceous period, and they found evidence of it in Myanmar as well as evidence that these kinds of grasses evolved with dinosaurs rather than after they had gone, uh, had disappeared. So this ergot fungus, it's a parasite, it would have been attracted to grass, and it resembled an ear of corn. So scientists don't know for sure if the dinosaurs who ate this fungus had hallucinations, but they're pretty sure that they ate the grass that had this fungus. So obviously not when the dinosaur is hallucinating, but or I guess maybe, depending on what the hallucination is. Uh, Camptosaurus had a maximum speed between 15 and 25 miles an hour. Much like other herbivores, they probably lived in herds, and we alluded to it earlier, but it's one of the oldest known iguanodontids known from a complete skeleton. So much like a lot of the dinosaurs... It was discovered in the 1870s by Marsh. So Marsh first named the dinosaur Camptonotus, which meant bent back, because the pelvis, they thought, was flexible and could bend in many different ways. 
Uh, then they realized that was not the case. They later changed the name to Camptosaurus because the name Camptonotus was actually being used to name a cricket. So they renamed it in the 1880s. Camptosaurus sounds better anyway. <laughs> so Camptosaurus's pelvis is pretty broad and it bows outwards, which is another reason they thought it was flexible for a while. And this means it had a wide gut region, which you see in a lot of herbivores, which means that they had an enlarged intestine, and uh, that means that they also probably were very gassy. <laughs> yeah. At one point in time, they thought Camptosaurus was bipedal. You see, this is like the fourth time we've talked about it just on this podcast, it seems like. But then they realized that even though it had a long tail that was about 50% of its weight, it wouldn't have been enough to counterbalance the heavy weight of all the extra intestines. So it would have been too front heavy to walk on just its hind legs. And that fits perfectly with the fact that its wrists were fused because if you're leaning on them, that makes it a lot easier to hold weight but not very useful as hands. One cool fossil that they found at Dinosaur National Monument in Utah is a 9-inch embryo. Yeah, and Dinosaur National Monument also has one of the most complete Camptosaurus skeletons that's ever been found, but it is missing a head, so it's kind of an <laughs> important part. And if you want to see more about Dinosaur National Monument, you can go to inodino.com, and we have a link to the website and some information about it. It was my favorite dinosaur museum or dinosaur site that I've ever been to so far. Camptosaurus is in the Ornithischian order. A lot of times we talk about families, orders are a level up from families. Like we talked about in the last episode, Ornithischia means of a bird and hip joint. So you put it together and it basically means bird hipped. Some commonly known Ornithischians include the horned dinosaurs, which are the ceratopsians, the big armored dinosaurs, like the ankylosaurs and the stegosaurs, and the hadrosaurids, which are the duck-billed dinosaurs, like iguanodon. Ornithischians often lived in herds, and there were more of them than the saurischians. They were often prey animals for theropods, and they were usually smaller than the sauropods. So the way to tell the difference between an ornithischian and a saurischian is which way the pubis bone points on the pelvis. So if it points down towards the tail or backwards, that means that it's a ornithischian. If it's pointing downward and towards the head or forwards, it's a saurischian. So during their evolutionary history, ornithischians shifted from bipedal to quadrupedal posture at least three times, and early on they were able to adopt both postures. 